Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Gloria on page 356. <laughs> The lesson from Ezekiel. You mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity. But you will have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Would you please stand with me in reading the psalm which is in your bulletin? We will, we will read this antiphonally. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. And I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep your law in my heart. Make me go on the path of your commandments. That is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees. And not to unjust Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Fulfill your promise to your servant. 
Turn away the reproach which I dread. Behold, I long for your commandments. A reading from the New Testament. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is. How is it now the moment for you to wake from sleep? For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn number 376.
In the name of the living God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, please be seated. If any of you has questions or would like to know more about the procedure that Matthew described for throwing people out of the church, please see me after the service, and we will reason together. (laughs) But today, I have the prophets on my mind. Last week, we talked about the prophet Jeremiah. We talked about the fact that the word of God, his his need, his, his compulsion to prophesy was so great that he couldn't hold it in. He couldn't hold it in himself, even though to speak it out would cause him to suffer harm and persecution. Today, in the reading from the prophet Ezekiel, God has raised the ante. God has made Ezekiel responsible for the results of his actions. He says to Ezekiel, you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, they shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. God has made Ezekiel responsible for the people who hear his prophecy. He has made Ezekiel responsible for shouting out a warning, shouting out danger. He, and if Ezekiel fails to, if Ezekiel prophesies and people hear it, and then they continue to do wicked things, Ezekiel is off the hook. So if you don't warn people when they are going astray, you are responsible for what happens to them, and I think it applies to all of us. We are responsible for each other. Like the folk song, that I used to teach to campers when I was in college. I, if I had a hammer, we are responsible to cry out danger, to cry out a warning, and to cry out love between our brothers and our sisters, not just here, but all over this land. Think about it. If you saw someone driving in a car and you knew that the bridge was out down the road, wouldn't you flag the car down? Wouldn't you take that responsibility for that person's life? Of course you would. Would, You would cry out danger. You would cry out a warning, and you would do it out of love. Would you stand by and say nothing while your nation was losing its soul? Would you do that? The nation losing its soul by casting out foreigners, by allowing people to go without medical care, by persecuting people who are not white or who are not Christians? Would you stand by and be silent? Because if you do, the nation's nation's harm is on your responsibility. It's on your nickel. Cry out a danger, cry out warning, cry out love. Love. In the letter to the Romans, we are told that the only obligation we have is to love. That's what it says. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And that is because we are responsible, made responsible by God, we we do owe them something. We owe people something, and that something that we owe them is love. But we need to stop and think about what that love is. It's not just a happy, warm feeling. It's not just just the 
elated warm feeling that we have between our spouses and our loved ones. It's not that happy warm feeling. It is a self-denying type of love. That is the love of God, sacred love. It is the closest that we can know of that is the love that a parent feels for a child. That's where we can begin to understand this unconditional, self-denying love where your interests take a back seat. You, you don't let your child run into danger even though you're not in danger yourself. Is that not a no-brainer? So even though it doesn't affect you, you're responsible for protecting everyone from dangers. But it's so easy for us to wash our hands and turn our back when someone or something is going in the wrong direction. We don't turn our back on them out of anger. I'm not saying that. We turn our back out of indifference. It's not my problem. It makes no difference to me. Each man to himself, they're responsible. I've got no, I've got no responsibility here. But we do. We do have a responsibility. For example, nothing in the political turmoil that we hear so much about today, none of that affects me personally. People without health care don't affect me personally. I have a great health plan. No one is going to deport me. I really have no personal interest in these issues that are leading our nation astray. But love is demanding something more from me. It, I owe my nation enough love to warn it that it may lose its soul. So if we believe the word of God is a living word, as I do, that word speaks to us today. We are responsible for the world, and we are responsible to the world. And the we that I'm talking about is the church. The church that is the two or three who have gathered together in the name of Jesus. The two or three or 30 or three million who have gathered together in the name of Jesus. And we are empowered by the Christ who promises to be with us. But we are also held accountable by that same Christ. The promise that he will be with us both empowers us and lets us know that he's there, that we cannot separate ourselves from him, and we are held accountable by him and held responsible. Amen.
Prayers of the People can be found on page 392 in the prayer book. Page 392, form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all the work, justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For those for whom our prayers for healing and encouragement are asked today, pray for Jeff, Lou, Kay, Ed, Carolyn, Amy, Corinne, Barb, John, Bill, Diane, Ella Rose, Mary, George, Leanne, Diana, Deborah, John, Sophia, Judith Ann, Bill and Jane, and the Exner family. For all who face the fallout of alcohol, drug, or physical abuse, or love someone who does, for healing within ourselves and for those in our thoughts and hearts today, and for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, and in the diocesan cycle of prayer, the Church of the Holy Spirit, Plymouth, where Bishop Hirschfeld is visiting, the Reverend Dandy, Randy Dales, priest in charge, and for all bishops and other ministers. We pray for the safety and speedy return of those deployed in the armed services and for comfort for their families, for all who pray for peace worldwide, for assurance and blessing to those looking for work and for their families. Hear us, Lord. Remember those having birthdays this week, celebrating birthdays, including Mary Moore, Christopher Jukes, Christopher Batty, and Tessa Carbonell. And for those celebrating anniversaries this week, we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And forever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. And from our book of remembrance, we remember Elmer Charles Haino. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins.
to us, and Jane has reminded me um, that we need to remember them. So she's going to offer a prayer for those who are affected. It's just off the top of my heart, but I have a great grandson in Palm Beach Gardens uh, who's about nine months old. And everyone, I think, almost in this congregation has friends and loved ones in Florida. So I ask that we all lift them up to God and that the Holy Spirit and Jesus will be with them every minute of the way and that they will all come through which I believe they will. I myself survived a hurricane that was uh, a three. And I remember it very well. It is possible to come through. So keep that in your mind and bless you all and bless all of them as the day goes on and the storm keeps coming. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen.
lot going on today, and I think the email said we would have a junior choir meeting, but I think there's also an acolyte training. There is acolyte training. Thank you. Acolyte training is not until noon, so the choir kids, if they're interested, it's off the air around 11 Sure. So why don't we say it like this? If any parents of junior choir members come, come and see me if you have any questions, but we'll, we'll get started with an actual rehearsal next Sunday. But I'll, I'll be around during coffee hour to talk about anybody who's interested. We're hoping to have a whole bunch of great kids who love singing. Thanksgiving continues 
on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us.
that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And that means all of you.
page 365. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like Alaric and Elias to come forward, please. Thank you for coming forward because your meme is not able to be here today to receive this communion gift, and we bless you as her grandchildren, and we ask God's blessing on your face who will be receiving this sacrament. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Hymn number 518. 